Thanks to everyone who has subscribed. If you have not, please do. And thanks for coming out here. I really appreciate you. Breaking news. How DSS operative escaped adoption, killed one kidnapper, gets one arrested in Abuja. <laughs> you know, what goes around, there is a common saying that says it comes around. It's going around, though, but if you don't uh, curtail it and nip it at the balls, it's called what goes around comes around. That's what is currently happening at the state of our nation today. DSS operative, you know, uh, it's a security uh, 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 operative was they were trying to adopt him. You know, one was killed and one was uh, uh, arrested. I don't know why they still arrest them. You catch them, just make there should be a law. You know, like in a, a what's it called Malaysia? If you are caught with drugs, there is no escape. There is already a law. Every term, Dick and Harry knows about it. Anyway, let's get straight into the news. How DSS operative escape adoption killed one kidnapper, get one arrested in Abuja. DSS operative escaped adoption killed one kidnapper, got one arrested in Abuja. An operative of the Department of State Service DSS identified as Tosin Dar Daramola has escaped adop adoption at gunpoint after his intensive rattling with them. It was an intentional rattling in his car into a curve, leading to the sudden death of one of the kidnappers and the other one arrested. It was gathered that the heroic action of the DSS operative was he was attacked at gunpoint by two kidnappers who forced their way into his vehicles and forcefully routed him from the Dosta Halaji junction to Ziba in the FCT capital. One of the two adopters with a knife and the other one held the official's neck while the other was armed with a gun. Why on motion, Daramola, who had his seat belt on, on brave, bravely nailed his car into a curve leading to the death of one of the criminal, dipping the knife into himself as he waggled the car. He stabbed himself unknowingly as the car waggled. Why the other with a gun momently lost consciousness and was apprehended by the police. The impact made the vehicle roll over several times and finally came to a halt and the tires were up facing the sky and the official survived with minor injuries. Thank God he had his seatbelt on. The incident underscores the growing insecurity in the area, especially at this period of Christmas and approaching the new year. Criminals are getting bolder, targeting victims to be adopted for ransom, irrespective of their, state, of their social status. This happened in Abuja. In Abuja, the FCT. You know, what goes around comes around though. So they just two of them forced their way into his car. Okay. Okay. No problem. They forced their way into his car. And you know, one was holding a knife. The other was holding uh, a gun as it were. But you know, the DSS operative, thank God he had a seat belt on. When he knew what was happening, started racing the car, stepped on the accelerator and began to race the car and waggling the car to the left, to the right. And as he was moving, you know, you remember that he himself was belted. The others were not. The other two people who uh, forced their way into, into his car were not belted. So as a result of the impact, him waggling the car left to right, right to left, these people, you know, lost consciousness. And I don't know how the other one was holding the knife. However, he stabbed himself with the knife and died in the process. You know, uh, why the other one, with the cops the way, was waggling the car seriously, could not even concentrate to shoot or do anything like of such or like that. And um, the car tumbled, you see, it tumbled several times. And at the end of the day, when the car stopped, it was already facing up in the sky. And, um, you know, thank God security operative came and that was how he was saved. If he had not been, if he had not been, if he had not, um, you know, had that tenacity to say, you know what, you cannot capture me. If he had not, if he had not had God on his side, all things being equal, 
it would have been, you know, it would have been a different case today as we speak. It would have been a different matter altogether, you know. And that's how one of the uh, people were apprehended and the other one was, the other one has already killed himself with a gun he had on himself. Uh, with the knife, I beg your pardon, he had on himself. He has already shot himself. He has already shot himself while the other one was apprehended. What are we talking about? This is actually happening. The level of insecurity, unless he gets home, I don't think they'll understand the capacity of what is going on. I don't think they do. The senators and the government officials, they all have aides that are protecting them. Look at Bruno State Governor. How many times has his convoy been attacked? How many times? But because he had those aides around him, and guess what? In those periods and in those process, people's life are lost to the hair. The soldiers and the rest that are protecting him, they are the ones who lose their life in the process. So uh, anyway, he gets escaped. Imagine that those security aides are not around him. He would have been a goner by now. For a second, imagine that those aides are not around him. What would have been of him now? We've seen him on TV come out again and again to say he was attacked. He saw the convoy of the B-boys here and there. Imagine that those aides were not with him. So what are we talking about? They keep allowing the Fulani headsmen to roam all around. You know, the criminal ones among them are making the country more dangerous and finding the business very lucrative. And uh, what Garuba Shewu can say is that there is a plan to stop them roaming around. You know, if they stop them roaming around today, I tell you, crime rates will drop by 25%. Because they are roaming around, even President Muhammadu Buhari knows, Garuba Shewu knows, that they all have weapons with them. It's not just the stick that they used to have 20, 30 years ago. They now have weapons with them. So what are we talking about? You know that these are big sources of problem, yet you allow them to roam about. Ah, they coming into the south and going into the forest and now engaging in kidnapping. It's when they were allowed freely to roam around with their cattles. So they begin to go into the bush, into the bush, into the bush, study the area, understand the terrain, know where people don't come to over time and now understand what is going on and have become a turn, a thumb in the, in the flesh of the people. And yet the government says nothing is going on. So until we tell ourselves the truth and rise up, I'm afraid it is what it is. Because they, the government aides are all having securities all around them. They have the siren coming, alerting the people that indeed a government official is coming. They don't understand what the common man is going through. People, family has been asked to pay ransom. You know, a lot is going on in this country. And it's sad that our government is rather aiding instead of protecting the people. It's a sad reality. Leave us a comment. God bless you. Bye for now.